Hi, this is Greg Altau, CTO and co-founder of Racken. Today I want to show you the digital rebar provision uh, version 3.1 with the Terraform provider. And we're going to kind of focus on the Terraform provider part so that you can use Terraform to ask and request machines from digital rebar provision and install an OS and then return them back to the pool. So we'll just get started with that. So to start with, we'll just start some machines running. So in this case, I have my Terraform plan file. In this case, we have a resource called DRP. That's how we're going to access DRP through the, with its username, password, and its endpoint, API endpoint. And then I'm going to ha have the system create a DRP machine resource. In this case, I want two CentOS nodes. And I'm going to use the new staging system in 3.1 to install a um, two existing nodes out uh, in DRP with CentOS 7.3. There's a whole bunch of other options and we'll kind of talk about those in a second. Um, so let me get that started. So I'll do Terraform knit, make sure I have my, so I have my DRP provider locally, make sure it's all ready. Then I can say plan, say, okay, look, I'm going to get two machines and then I can apply. And then that will go off and you can see in my window over here my log of DRP running and you can see it's getting stuff. In this instance over here I had a SSH session to one of the nodes and it power cycled it and is now in the process of going through the install process. So what am I doing? Let's kind of look around in that. So to do that we'll go to the UI and this is an overview page, and from here I can see I have two machines sitting in CentOS install, but what did I do? Well, I'm doing all this in Packet right now. It's easier for me to kind of do machines and running them all on my laptop. So in this case, I have two machines. I had them pre-staged already sitting and ready, ready to go. So I had booted them from Packet. I had had them get discovered by Digital Rebar Provision and then sat in what we call Terraform Ready. Terraform Ready is a stage in our system that lets, uh, acts as a holding point for nodes. Um, the machines have a set of parameters on them that indicate whether or not that they should be managed by Terraform or, and if they've been allocated by Terraform. In this case, both machines have been allocated and managed. The discovery process will take it and market is managed and then once it's allocated by somebody the um, the parameter will be set to true the system the machines in this case were already in the pool uh, allocated to and it's now in the process of installing you kind of see that in the, the window here now what did we take to get to this place so i took and installed my DRP, kind of per the quick start guide. I added the basic content as well as some of the advanced content. And then I added a um, IPMI module that lets me manage the device. In this case, I'm using, since I'm using packet nodes, I configured that plugin, which allows me to manage um, the packet devices as if they were IPMI real systems. There's an IPMI plugin that lets you manage nodes out of band uh, through the IPMI subsystem so that you can power cycle them, have them pixie boot next time, those kind of actions. And in the case for my packet um, IPMI provider, I had to give it my key that I needed to use to access the node. So we've obfuscated that so that you know it's private. Then I had to set up a discovery process so that as nodes were added, in this case, I go and configure my packet node to be a custom iPixie, and I tell it to always Pixie boot, and then I point it at my DRP instance and tell it to use the default iPixie. That lets me get into, if you're familiar with DRP, Sledgehammer, which is our discovery image, and from there I can then add and do additional actions to the node but I have to be able to define that. So in this, I'm using our staging system. So we have lots of stages. These represent kind of intermediate steps that I want to do to get to where I'm going. 
And in the case of this, I've defined a kind of set of workflow that I want my node to go through. So I discover it, then that's just where we start when we pixie boot a node that we don't know about. We end up in discover stage. Then we are going to transition to packet discover. And what happens in that stage is we test to see if we're on a packet system uh, out in the packet.net nodes. And when that happens, we add a profile that lets us do things like see console logs, um, see the, um, get the UID so that we can take the IPMI actions and we set that on the node. Once that stage is complete, we transition to Terraform Ready. Terraform Ready will turn the box off based upon a parameter I've set and will basically mark the node as managed by Terraform and waiting to be allocated. And it goes to sleep, waiting for somebody to use Terraform to run it. Now what happened is when we ran Terraform, we specified what stage we wanted to start in. In that case, we started in the CentOS 7.3 install stage. When Terraform ran, it saw that it could do IPMI actions against the box. It told it to pixie boot the next time and then rebooted the node. It rebooted into this install image that we're seeing here. As it runs through and finishes the install, the next thing it will do before it reboots out of the kickstart file, this is a kickstart based install opposed to just a kind of a DD of an image or a raw install, the, it will use the packet system and pull the SSH keys from packet. There's other tasks and stages that let you add SSH keys from parameters on the system. But in this case, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that I'm in packet and use those keys. And then once that's finished, it will then transition to complete no wait. And what that means is we are done and we don't wanna wait around to run any more tasks. We're just going to let the box do what it needs to do and let it finish and let Terraform finish out on the system. And so that defines kind of my workflow. I can just as well define that I wanted to install Ubuntu instead um, of my CentOS image. And in that case, you can see it follows the same pattern. It goes to SSH keys and then to complete wait. So as I go look at my machines and my overview, I can see I've got two of them sitting there in that system. Now, in the case of my Terraform plan, I just said, give me two machines, any two machines. But machines have parameters. And so if I look, in this case, I have three basic parameters, but I, there's parameters are arbitrary. And while we have a strong typing system where you can define all the various formats and, and what the parameter should take as a, as a field, it also can be open and you can set whatever. In this case, um, the Terraform provider allows you to set uh, profiles or parameters as well as profiles. So profiles are collections of parameters. So like in this case, I have a packet console parameter profile, sorry, that has a kernel console parameter. This tells the kernel to use TTYS1 for all of its output, which for the packet environment is needed to actually see the um, output from the kernel as it, in the TTY as it runs. So that's how we're seeing that. Um, but parameters could be anything, and I could add profiles, I could define a set of profiles and add them, or I can just go add parameters directly to the machine. Now in the case of um, Terraform, I can, for example, filter based upon parameters, so in this case, or fields, so in this case it says only use, would be an example of only use machines named Greg or Greg2 in this case, would be in the resource instance pool for that. But we also have additional fields. You can define boot env or stage, either one. You can specify the description of what you want the node's description. You can specify the name. There's a user data field that you can put what would traditionally be a cloud init if you were going to run that post. You can also add profiles to the node, or you can also set parameters of whatever values you want. The restriction right now is they have to have string values um, for the uh, values. But the point is you can drive pretty much all of the machine's attributes 
from within the Terraform DRP machine resource. Okay. In this case, it looks like my machine is done. It's installed, it's rebooted. Terraform has said it's finished. I have both my nodes. So I should be able to SSH root at, in this case, I can go back and get one of these and SSH into it. And there I am in my test node too, all installed and accessible with my keys. So, and I can get to both of them. So I can go 78.51 and there I am in both my nodes. Now, once I'm done with my resource, I can say Terraform Destroy, and it'll say, do you really want to do this? And I say, yes. And what happens here is we will reset the nodes. Um, in this case, we'll, uh, let me refresh, refresh. We'll have set the Terraform managed and allocated to false. We'll set the stage back to discover, and then we'll reboot the node. And as you can see, we're powering it off and it should restart here in a couple minutes. Um, and that way it'll go back through discovery, get found, get marked as managed but not allocated and added back into the pool. So if I were to try and run re-init or reapply that system, the system would say there's no machines available because I have no machines currently managed yet. There haven't been finished discovery. So that allows us to keep track of what pool's available and what's not. Um, Additionally, the, uh, once the system's applied, in the same way I could say, okay, I don't want to do that. I want to do my Ubuntu, Ubuntu 16.04 install stage. And this time I'm gonna have two Ubuntu nodes. And I say plan. I need to um, remove my Terraform file. Well, there's probably ways to do this. I'm still learning Terraform, but I'll start over and I will plan this case. Oh, I forgot to rename them in my description, but it's doing the Ubuntu, probably did it before. And then I'm gonna say, well, I can refresh here, see that they're ready. In this case, the nodes have powered down. This is a power saving feature. You don't have to. The Terraform content defines a parameter called Terraform power, power off. If it's true, the node will power off and wait for it to, for, uh, and be off, and Terraform will power it on. Um, you can also set that to false, and then the node will be closer to active and be powered up and waiting to be rebooted. Um, in the case of Sledgehammer, or in the case of installing through like a Kickstarter or Preseed, we have to reboot anyway. So in that case, it's not that big of, I mean, the time is, there's not much time difference. In some cases where you're like using the sledgehammer image to DD an image into place or do some update, then that would be faster because you wouldn't have to wait for the system to boot into sledgehammer to take actions and then come back around. But that's the Terraform integration as it exists today. All sorts of future plans to add the ability to drive the other objects from within Terraform. But that's what we're starting with. It seems like it's a good starting point to help you drive nodes that exist in digital rebar provision. As always, look for us on at uh, rackin.com or digital or rebar.digital for more information about digital rebar provision and Rackin's product around digital rebar. Thanks.